There's, there's many, many uh, Spanish schools out there. What makes uh, the, the mountain school unique? So I think one of the, the main differences between this school and any other school that you're going to find in Guatemala is the, the location of it just being in a rural community like it is. A lot of the, the schools that, you, that you'll see in the cities, um, in Chela or in Antigua, they, they'll talk about what life's like on a farm in Guatemala or what life's like on the, in the countryside and maybe go to a trip or two, but here people really are, they're eating with the families, they're, they're seeing what life is like around here and that's how a lot of the, most of the Guatemalan population lives. Um, I think another really amazing thing here too is that while a lot of, in other, um, in other Spanish schools, people stay with homestays, which is amazing, but here they'll eat with families and stay together in the school as a community. And so each week I, I see the students really get to know each other and get to know the, the teachers and the people around here because you really are living in this tight community. And it's been really amazing to see week in and week out what the bonds that are formed here. Yeah, so the, we work with two different communities here, Fatima and Nuevo San Jose, and, and both of them, they have different stories but similar ones, and there are similar stories that happened all around Guatemala when the coffee prices went down. Um, the, the, the owners of the coffee fingers just stopped paying them, and after time and after different labor, labor struggles that they had, and they organized to, to fight to get their back pay. And after a lot of struggles, after some comrades were lost, they eventually were, were paid, but with that had to leave the, the communities in which they lived, the farms in which they lived. And with help from the Catholic Church, they were able to find the land that they, that they have here. And again, it's that same story where that people can read these books about the whole history of Guatemala during the time of the coffee crisis, but to really see the impact of it and to see these communities that are now living here having to go look for day labor every day because they don't have the 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 security of having a job their job now is to look for labor with the school here they have more work the women have work they're able to to be the breadwinners of their family and they weren't able to do that before but just having students here and eating with the families is a big deal for them You study Spanish four hours a day, and the time with the families would be probably about an hour and a half in total, so the rest of your time, apart from studying outside of the classroom, will be um, in conferences. We have conferences and chats with different members of the communities. Um, there's topics that cover life as a midwife, um, immigration, um, what life was like in the, in the communities in the past. Um, the, their history, the histories of the communities. We also have conferences with people from from communities a little bit further away. Um, they talk about life during the war. They talk about a uh, radio station from Colombo, which is the, the closest city or town to here. Um, we also offer different, different hikes um, to nearby coffee fincas, waterfalls. Apart from just being in a rural community where you get to see see poverty, you get to see this beautiful, amazing backdrop as well. Um, we're living on a on a coffee and banana plantation, and near us there's tons of agricultural land and mountains, and it's a very beautiful place. All of the teachers here are either have either finished their university studies or are currently completing their university studies. Um, for example, Tito and Lupita are studying education. Abby has almost completed her studies to become a lawyer. And then you have Annie, who's this amazing artist. And Ronnie is well studied. Uh, he went to, to law school to, to be a lawyer. Um, and then we have Abelino and Jorge that come from the local communities, the communities that we work with um, directly by the school. And they've been leaders in their community. They they grew up learning how to how to grow coffee and how to pick coffee, 
but coming to the school they've they've also shown the the connections they've had with their communities and their their ability to be leaders in the past and in the present in their in their communities and that's translated to their work in the school as well. So the amazing thing about being at the school that I've seen personally is that you can talk about living in poverty, you can talk about, oh, they don't have money, um, they have to fight for life every day, but every single person I've met has just been amazingly welcome, with huge smiles. You walk by and say buenas tardes and you just see people light up. Um, they especially light up when the students walk by and they get to see these these gringos walking through their tiny towns um, with cameras and being able to to bring these pictures back to the kids too that don't have access to cameras and just every I don't know I feel like I feel like every every minute everybody's just living and so it's easy to come from from a country like ours where we we feel like we really are um, privileged and we are privileged but there's a lot of things that we don't have that they have here they they have these communities that that are just absolutely amazing and so it's one thing to say oh you're gonna come to a rural community and and see this this impoverished town but it's not it's not like that it's not like that on a day-to-day -day basis what it is here is is living and it's living to to a degree more than I would say most of us do in the United States. Thank you.